be more than human. And welcome back to the channel. My name is Joseph Carroll. I write under the pen name J.R. Carroll. And today we're going to talk about one of my most anticipated reads of the year. Um, I've been wanting to get to this book and this author uh, for quite some time, ever since I started uh, the channel. And that would be Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. Now, this book um, is the first in the in the Bloodsworn trilogy. Um, it is also it'll be followed by Hunger of the Gods. When I first um, was thinking about starting my channel, almost been a year now. Um, you know, Shadow of the Gods and Hunger of the Gods, they were you know all the rage. I mean, that was. You know, it, it it was, you know, the next big epic fantasy series, um, you know, I heaped so much praise. And so I was like, well, eventually I'm going to get around to, uh, to reading it. And it was on the, you know, at the top of my list to get to. Now, straight away, I, I will say that with so much praise, so much hype uh, for this series, I came into it expecting, you know, next level, um, top tier, um, you know, story writing and all of that. And I, it, it's weird. It's it's one of those things. It's weird to say. It's like. Yes, I liked it, but maybe I was expecting, uh, you know, too much coming in. And there's been a few of those books here, you know, especially when you watch a lot of BookTube and then you're in BookTube and you're talking to people. Um, it, and I hate to say that it was just good because, you know, if you don't say it's the best ever, um, then, you know, people think you're bad mouthing it, but what's that? Um, for me, um, the first like three fourths of the book was just okay. Um, I, you know, he bounced around, not as bad as, you know, Malzahn with a hundred characters. Um, and I've actually heard that these, um, you know, you know, this book has less characters than most of his other books, but we're, you know, we're thrown in and you have three main characters. Uh, you have Orca, Varg, and Elvar. And, you know, basically this is a world 300 years removed from a, um, you know, a big war that broke out that, you know, all the gods uh, actually died and but there's still relics of the gods like little pieces of them here or there and they're super valuable and people use them to create stuff um but yeah it's brought up over and over again all oh, the gods are dead the gods are dead um you know the g good riddance you know is the way a lot of people feel um but you know it's super norse inspired i knew that coming in and uh he, John's, you know, his prose are on point as good as anybody that I've read. Um, and his knowledge of Norse and the languages and everything is uh, second, second to none. There was a, there was a lot of, um, you know, words and stuff that you weren't overly familiar with, but you kind of, you kind of know what they mean even if you're not familiar with him. But what uh, what is the word, the phrase that he used over and over again, and I about lost my mind. He, it was like... Um, Thought cage? Or something along those lines. It's just said over and over and over again. And I'm just like, okay, we can stop using that phrase anytime you want, John. Um, but... Uh, I was told that his battle scenes and fight scenes are maybe the best in all of fantasy. 
And uh, I was not disappointed. That was one of the pros. His pros are one of the pros. And then the, another pro is, yes, his battle scenes are great, um, very realistic. Um, he doesn't pull any punches. People, uh, you know, your, you know, your protagonists and stuff, they get injured. Uh, not a lot of plot armor around, which I really enjoyed. Um, but one thing I did hear a lot was uh, character work is just amazing. You, you can't beat the character work. Um, and for me, that was like, I, I didn't feel like any of the characters um, grew throughout the book, really. Um, you know, they were pretty much who they were from the beginning to the end, but they were good, you know? Um, and like I said, the first three fourths of the book, it was just kind of okay. But that last 25% of the book was crazy. Um, just, you know, and I've heard that, that people say that that's kind of how he does, you know, towards the end of the book, that the book just runs and is very true. Um, you know, I, I love, you know, I love, a, you know, I love a good revenge story. And that's pretty much everybody in this uh, book. It's like, you know, the main characters, it's revenge, revenge, and then uh, glory. And that, that's a big thing throughout the whole thing is the glory of the battle and very Viking-like um, and everything. But, um, you know, if you haven't read this book and you're kind of, you know, you're still kind of on the fence about whether to go all in on it, um, it's not a really long book, um, but if you like, if you like anything that has to do with the no Norse Vikings, you, you're really gonna like this. Um, you know, if you're into good fight scenes, not a lot of huge battles, but if you're if you like one on one st type stuff or or a handful of people, and you'd like that kind of more intimate, uh, you know, fighting scenes, you're you're really gonna like this. Uh, I can't wait to uh, get into Hunger of the Gods because, like I said, I, I like the back end. And not just because he kind of runs with it, but because of what the story started to do um, in the back end. And I really think, or I'm really hoping, that Hunger of the Gods picks up right where we left off with that story and everything. Um, so I'll probably be jumping into Hunger of the Gods the beginning of next month, unless I just blow out all my TBR uh, quickly like I have done, been known to do. Um, but appreciate all of you uh, for watching. Let me know in the comments, um, have you read this book? Do you know How'd you feel about it? Did you love it? Did you like it? Did you not? Um, make sure you're subscribed so you can get all the notifications and everything. And remember, be more than human.